we just get into an atmosphere of worship?
I think we have, we have, we're going to have extra today because the test that we are doing, they've given us free hands to do it for the next 15 minutes. Okay? So look at people who are celebrating birthday. What are they doing? Hey, are you celebrating? So have you not got energy? What we are going to be doing, the church will join them. We are going to run, we are going to dance through the whole aisle for the next 15 minutes. Okay? We are going to join them. So and now let us get the best microphone. Not the one that is not working. Okay? Have, have you got the best microphone? Or you want to have this? Have this.
one of these people on this stage. Who here is grateful to have seen the end of January? Thank you. You're grateful? Okay, so these people on the stage have more reason to be grateful because they've hit landmarks in their lives. So, Daddy, if you just would come up and help us pray for them, and then we'll cut into this beautiful cake and just give God all the glory. Thank you. Well, I'm going to talk about what's going to happen on 4th of February. But if this is what you think is your Thanksgiving posture, when you are singing and you are going, even faithful Lord. Ah. Has God been good to you? Has he been faithful? Are you looking around because you think people might say, oh, why is he dancing like that? Or why is he, uh, please have your seat. Thank you. Why is he dancing like that? I want to prepare, I want you to prepare yourself for next week because it's going to be a thanksgiving service and we are going to thank the Lord for what he has done for us and what he's going to do and what we don't even know that he's preparing to do. And today we are celebrating with everyone standing here except the choir unless they are part of it but they are always sharing part of the celebrations anyway. Praise the Lord. And I also want to recognize uh, Brother Conley, Pastor Conley Atilade. He was 59 on the 24th of January. I've sent for the inspectors to come and check his uh, birthday. And also, it was a triple celebration in their home. Because Toby and Tolua, they also turned 18. <laughs> Woohoo! Hallelujah. They are miracle children. There's nothing that God cannot do. And uh, there is another person around there, but we'll keep it until when it is time for, for, for us to make the announcement. But what we are rejoicing about is that the Lord has spared their lives. The Lord has been uh, their help. The Lord has supplied all their needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's why we are celebrating. And they are also looking good. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. And I want you to pray for them. Pray in your heart. Pray for them and thank the Lord for them because they have caused us to celebrate. Let's bring our prayers to close. Father, we thank you for everyone standing here on the stage with me who are celebrating their birthdays. We give you praise for their lives. We thank you that we have not lost any of them. We thank you that you have given them life. You have given them strength. Though the fig, the fig trees may not have blossomed, but they will always rejoice in your kindness, in your goodness. And so we rejoice with them that you have brought them this far. And you that you brought them this far, you will never leave them nor forsake them. And so, Lord, we look forward to celebrating them next year as well because of the good things that you have in plan for them. And so as they, as they, as they travel the road of this year, the new stage of their lives, Lord, we pray that good things will happen to them grace they will enjoy from you. Favor, they will enjoy favor of God, they will enjoy favor of man. 
Lord, we pray against sicknesses. Sicknesses will not have any inroads into their bodies, into their homes, and whatever they lay their hands on, because they have come to celebrate what you have done for them, Lord, we pray that let them prosper in it. Father, we say thank you. We need more of this in our midst so that we can give thanks to you for the good things that you have blessed us with. We thank you that they are members of the New Covenant Church Strata. Lord, we pray that as they look unto you to make those things that are impossible possible, Lord, this year you will surprise them. They will enjoy unusual favor. Father, we say thank you. Keep them for us, Lord. Watch over them for us, Lord. And let, they, let it be well with them. Because your word says to the righteous, say to the righteous, it is well with their soul. So I, I say to everyone standing that it is well with your soul. And it shall be well with your soul. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. And then I think it would make sense for the lovely Atilade family to come and help us cut the cake today. So if we could come forward. And as a church, if we just do a count from one till three, and then on three they will cut the cake for us. Okay, so together, one, two, three. Okay, thank you, everybody.
it is a great honor to share with us this morning the youth uh, ministry vision for 2018. We strongly believe that where there is vision, there is direction. Where there is vision, there is hope. Where there is vision, there is clarity. Where there is vision, there is goals and objectives that one would like to achieve. Before I proceed, can the usher please help me hand out the vision to all the parents in the house? <laughs> so that they can follow me as I read along. Um, while we wait for the ushers to help us give out the vision, um, the youth ministry vision for the year 2018, um, just to encourage us that we are in this together. We are in this together. So, and I pray that God will give us the strength to make the work not easy, but fun and enjoyable in Jesus' name. I think it would be a wrong prayer to pray that God should make it easy from what you've seen on the altar today. All we can ask for is that God should keep making it fun for us. And God will continue to strengthen us in Jesus' name. I believe we all have the vision now, and I will read. By the way, before I read, just to um, lay the foundation that this is not um, a vision of God, um, Gabriel's ideas. I believe this is God's plan for the youth ministry based on the... Um, national um, vision for the year 2018. And let's, we can read along as I read. You can listen and follow along in Jesus' name. Greetings in the name of Jesus. The year 2017 was a year of great happenings in our midst as a youth ministry. Many accomplishments, new additions, new set of passionate executives, new youth pastor, many good reports, from our youth academics results and good report from various other endeavors. Also, without any doubt, God has, God has enlarged our youth workers, granting us increase in our personal lives and establishing many of us in the place of our destiny. New babies were born, changes in careers, changes in many other areas of our life, especially spiritually. To Almighty God alone be all the glory in Jesus' name. I believe God has greater things in store for us in the year 2018. But every plan of God always requires our human cooperation to see it come to pass. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14, and in Acts 13, 22, God found a man whose desire was to please God, named David, by focusing on many, by focusing on making the intention of God a reality on the earth. But before God crowned him a king, David, before he was, David was first anointed. David, therefore, has to be tested, according to 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. He has to be tested if truly he understood the anointing upon him by defeating Goliath, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We could see that David did not fight as others fought, but he began the fight by uttering out the word of confidence possibilities, divine power, etc., which were by the reason of the God that he knew was on, on his side. Eventually, the head of Goliath came down with ease by his hand, and later on, he mounted the throne after several other challenges and trials he had to face, and he overcame them all because he kept his focus on God of all possibilities. God will test his anointing upon us to familiarize us with it so that we can be conscious of it to maximize it. Yet the devil will also tempt us because of the anointing upon us to tarnish and destroy our glorious destiny. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Luke 4, 1 to 14, we will not fall victim of the devil's devices in Jesus' name. I can't hear your Amen. May the Lord disappoint all the devices of the wicked one against us and our youth ministry in the year 2018 and beyond in Jesus' name. We must therefore understand that every child of God, especially those who, specifically those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, have Christ inside of them and therefore have the anointing of God upon them. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 
John chapter 1, verse 12, John 15, 1 to 17. John 14, especially verse 20, Jesus says, I am in God and you are in me. Therefore, according to Jeremiah 32, verse 26 to 27, Philippians 2, 13, Jeremiah 32, 26 to 30, 27, that says that I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Philippians 2, 13, he says that God is the one that works in us both to, will, both to do and to will. And Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Therefore, beginning from the year 2018 and beyond, nothing shall be impossible for us anymore. I can't hear your amen. In the year 2018 and beyond, no height will be too high for us to climb anymore. No dream will be too big for us to pursue anymore. Absolutely nothing will ever intimate, intimidate us again in Jesus' name. Every spirit of fear is destroyed now and forever in Jesus' name. No more timidity for us in Jesus' name. No more limitations for us in Jesus' name. No more impossibilities for us anymore in Jesus' mighty name. By the grace of God, our theme for the year as the youth ministry in 2018 is, I can do all things. Can the church echo that alongside with me one more time? Can we make it louder one more time? I want you to say it convincingly. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. If nothing is too hard for God to do, who is our God? Therefore, as a child of God that we are, we can do absolutely all things because of the God in us. Very often, we find it easy to believe God or any pastor to pray for us, but we struggle to actually believe what God says we can do and doing what God says we should do. Just as we see, just as we see it in the case of Gideon, whom God called a mighty man, a mighty man of valor in Judges chapter 6, but he, can't, he couldn't see what God is saying about him. He rather prayed that God will use someone else or better, someone else or someone better, or in fact, God should do it by himself rather than using him. But I pray that God will not replace you in Jesus' name. But God wants to raise copies of himself in the youth ministry. Youth that will cause the devil to remain in a permanent position of trembling. I can't hear your amen, church. Youth that will stand up to injustice in our land. Youth that will build the kingdom of God. Youth that will build his church in Jesus' name. In the year 2018, our youth shall only be found in great places. In Jesus' mighty name. The spirit of the Lord shall stir up unusual boldness and audacity in our youth in Jesus' name. To dare the, un to dare the undoable, to believe the unbelievable and become the unimaginable with undeniable result of good report in Jesus' mighty name. Therefore, the healing virtue of God in Jesus will flow to heal any youth in need of healing in Jesus' mighty name. All our youth shall be transformed, renewed, re-energized, re-equipped, rebuilt throughout the year 2018 in Jesus' mighty name. How many of us like that vision? How many of us like that, that vision? I'm not quite sure to everyone. Everyone, Many people agree with it. Okay. I'm glad to those that like it. One thing I love about vision is this. It always leaves us with a responsibility. Amen. The church are not smiling at me anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So every month we have a theme that we will be focusing on in order to keep our gaze on the vision. God as a prayer is what we started with in, year, in January 2018. Because if we can do all things, therefore we pray to God that can make all things happen. So we must understand the necessity and the importance of prayer. And we thank Brother Laulu who has dealt, I mean, very well with that in the youth church. And we will continue with God, godliness is profitable. It's a profitable character in February. With a godly character, you can do all things. And also, we continue with the rest of the month. March, override fear with confidence. It takes confidence to do the undoable. In the month of April, we will be focusing on faith makes anything possible, which means that our, it will take faith to take a bold step in order for us to do all things. May God's word is my wisdom 
It takes a wisdom of God to be able to do all things because wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. In June, we will be looking at love is the nature of God. It takes the love of God to be able to do all things. If Jesus Christ was to consider otherwise, there's no way he would die on the cross. But for the sake of love, he went all in. I see you going all in and coming out victorious in Jesus' name. In July, I have a great destiny in Christ Jesus because the vision you have ahead of you will cause you to be able to know that you can do all things and take both steps. And also, we go to the month of August where we will be looking after God's heart. After God's heart. This talks about going after soul. John 3, 16. This is, the, this is all that God loves. The Bible says that God does not want the, the, the death of a sinner, but that of a righteous so our young to monitor our young people's development in the youth church and in general, um, just like just as yourself, we are we are limited. Yes, we serve a God that is unlimited, meaning that there is what there's how far we can go, there's how much we can give them, but then with your support, there's many much more that we can achieve together. Therefore, we need our parents to monitor the youth. Make sure that your youth is imparted, is developing. If there's something you're not sure of, speak to us about it, and then we will work on making things better. Also, speak to youth workers if you have any concerns about your young person on any issue. Um, the specific youth worker you could approach is Brother Laulu, myself, Brother Gabriel. Myself is Brother Gabriel. Sister Fiona and Sister Abby Collardin. Also, every Sunday, discuss with your young people what they learn in youth church and how they will apply it to their life daily. Ask them, have this discussion with them because you will be the one to be able to convey the message to them in case they might have any further question. Then you can also break down what they've learned and then explain it further to them. And the, third, the fourth thing is every joint celebration service such as this or any other service that we may have, I, they should sit together with, our parents should sit together with young people, with their youth as a family, ensuring that they pray, they worship, and focus in the service, not to put them on one side and open the brother Gabriel will chase them and then tell them to sit down and be quiet. But let's worship together as a family. Amen? The amen has gone low. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Um, be quick. This is very important, please. Because we don't want our youth to run to anywhere else for an answer. Please, as parents, be quick to listen and very slow to respond when they, cons when they consult you on any issue of their life. Pray with them and seek further help if needed. But first, we must ensure to give them scriptural counsel and direction, which means this will leave our parents to buckle up and also wait on the Lord. Last but not the least, continue to pray for us, for us all in the youth church. And also, just to let you know, we are your future. And my prayer is this, by the grace of God, by the, by the help of the Holy Spirit, the youth ministry will not fail you in Jesus' name. The youth ministry will not fail you in Jesus' mighty name. And also, please, parents should note these dates. Um, our Sundays, Tuesdays, and Friday weekly and slash monthly meetings. Um, so that when the youth need you to bring them to church, we can make plans and adequate arrangements. And also, we'll pass on other information to you as time goes on. Um, just a quick word of prayer because... This is the doing of God, and I believe strongly that he will take his hand to bring it to pass. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. And we pray, Lord, that your mouth has spoken it, and your hand will bring it to pass. Therefore, Father, by your strength, by your right hand, that do it valiantly, by your spirit, Father, breathe upon the vision, bring it to pass speedily in Jesus' name. Indeed, make it fun. Indeed, make it very much fun for us that we may not be tired or weary in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, so we're going to
we're going to continue in today's service. Um, first of all, this is the time for the word, by the way, and I'm looking forward to this because these young people are on fire. Do you believe that? Amen. So um, can we pull our hands? Um, I'm just here to read the Bible to you today. So I'm reading from Matthew 6, 25 to 34, if we could all turn our Bibles there. Can I hear hallelujah when we're all there? Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so 25 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They need they neither toil nor, sp nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not, more, will he not much more clothe you, or you of, o you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. church. Um, I'm going to be doing a spoken word on prayer. Sorry. <laughs> prayer. What do we define as prayer? We shouldn't just pray when we're in despair. And we shouldn't just pray when we need health care. And we definitely should not just pray when something's unfair. Unfair. What do I mean by unfair? When you don't get something you want. The type of want that you don't necessarily need. But this is when people really start to plead for something that you simply do not need. Remember, the scripture says, My God, your God, our God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Prayer is not just asking God for what you want. Prayer is a two-way two communication in which we express our elation to praise God for his creation for the majority of the duration. What a privilege to be able to pray to the Father of light. He loves us with an everlasting love. He is the powerful one, the one who promises to be with us even till the end of age. Delight in the grace of God and give all your cares to him. For the Lord is more able more able to, to move that mountain you are facing. He is able. He will keep you in perfect peace. So next time you kneel down, stand up, pacing up and down, in prayers to our God, remember it's a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. Even your silent mutters, the Father in heaven hears it all. Today I'm here to talk about prayer. But first we need to ask ourselves, what is prayer? To me, prayer is a form of communication with God where we can offer our gratitude or make requests we want answered. It is also two-way communication with God as he can talk to us to give us guidance or even share with us revelations. Please may we turn our Bibles to Mark 11 verse 24. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. To me, this teaches us that in order for our prayers to be answered, we truly have to believe in that in God for what we have prayed for will be fulfilled. This is because prayer is based on our faith in God's ability to fulfill our requests. 
Faith can be defined as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. This is important because faith is a fundamental part of prayer, since without faith, prayer is a waste of time. And with this faith comes appropriate action. Now, please may we turn our Bibles to James chapter 2, verse 17. Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. To me, this teaches us that faith without works is a dead faith because the lack of work reveals an unchanged life or a spiritually dead heart. This is important because how we live reveals what we believe and whether the faith we profess to have is a living faith. For example, many students may also relate to that week before your exams, knowing you haven't revised at all and you just begin to pray that you pass your exam. People showing faith without works will not do any other revision and will walk into the exam expecting the best grades, but this is foolish. However, those who show faith with works will not only pray to pass their exams, but for God to guide their revision in order to come out of the best grades. Another example from the Bible would be at the wedding in Cana in Galilee. At this wedding, Mary spotted the need at the wedding, which was that the wine was running out. So she turned to Christ, which is a form of prayer, and said, there is no wine, having faith that he will provide. But Jesus showed resistance, saying, but it isn't my time. However, Mary had absolute faith that Jesus could answer her need without knowing how Christ would do it. Therefore, when you pray, you must, have unwa you must be unwavering, knowing that God will answer your request. Therefore, in conclusion, prayer works hand in hand with faith and actions. I pray that you've been blessed by what I have to say. Amen. Uh, let's bow our heads to pray, please. <coughs> Father Lord, we're very grateful for gathering us here in your presence once again to worship at your feet. We ask that our worship and our praise will be acceptable unto you. We ask, Holy Spirit, you would let the words that are being ministered today really make an impact on the minds, the spirits, and the hearts of the people of all who hear this word. And let the name of the Father be glorified. In Jesus' name. Uh, can we turn our Bible to Isaiah 30 from verse 18? That's uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. And it says, Therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. So following from Caleb and Precious, I will also be talking about prayer. And, you know, if you're a Christian, the chances are that you've prayed at least one prayer, and that's the prayer of repentance or the sinner's prayer. And, you know, you've been told that prayer is a way for you to talk to the Father and for him to respond to you and for, you know, ask him to do so-and-so or whatever it is that you want him to do for you. But, you know, one thing I found is that most of the time when we pray, we're merely talking at God rather than actually connecting with him. And when I say talking like God, if you think of it like this, um, if you have a conversation with somebody, you know, you could talk about anything, anywhere, anytime. And, you know, maybe a couple of hours later in the day or maybe the next day, you remember that you've spoken to this person, but you don't remember exactly what it is you said to them. But when it's something that's important that you want to say to them, something that has gravity to it, you will take yourself to a more quieter place so that you can connect with them, and what you say actually passes on to the person that you are speaking to. And, you know, I've been praying for most of my life, you know, and uh, most of my childhood, um, my prayers were merely at night before I go to sleep. Eventually, around 2009 or so, I began to pray in the morning once I woke up. But most of the prayers that I prayed was, you know, thank you for... Uh, Thank you for the night, or thank you for the day, thank you for protecting me. 
uh, protect me as I go to sleep or protect me as I go throughout the day. Forgive you all my sin, in Jesus' name, amen. Simple as like that. And, um, you know, most of the time, I just wanted to be done with the prayer because, you know, I was talking as God. And when I'm not connected with God, I cannot perceive a response from him. And, you know, when you're doing this on a daily basis for a number of years, eventually you start to think to yourself, you know, what's the point of it all? You know, why am I doing this? I can see my non-Christian pairs who do not pray. They also sleep. They also wake up. They're also prospering. So why am I doing this? But at the same time, you know, you don't really want to take that risk. And, you know, um, I, you know, I want to cover my position. You know, I want to head my bed because... You know, when you're sleeping, you don't want to be seeing anything strange in your dreams, you know. So you want to sleep in peace. You want to wake up in peace. Um, another reason why I always want to be done with prayers is because I felt I was bad at praying, you know. Um, my mom can pray for as long as you tell her to pray. And at night, there are times that, you know, you just want to sleep, but she will continue praying, you know. I mean, it's a gift, but I didn't have that. I don't have that particular gift. My father can pray with eloquence. He can pray and, you know, when you're hearing him praying, you're thinking, yeah, this is really going through to God, you know. <laughs> um, you know, my brother, can, when he was praying, you know, he will put scriptures in the prayers, but I'm just saying words and being done with it. So, you know, I thought that my prayers, in a way, wasn't good enough for God. You know, it is, it's, it's lacking in quality at times. But, you know, even so, during that period, there were times that I did actually enjoy praying. And, you know, um, those tended to take place when we went to Nigeria. And um, because we have a house, we live in um, Akora, which is like the capital of Ondo States, you know. It's a fairly big town. It's not Lagos, but, you know, then those stress is very relaxed, it's a very calm environment. And, you know, um, the times when, for example, when the Nepal people decide to take light and the generator is not on, and, you know, there's not much for a young person to do. So, you know, I'll generally be, like, reading books. I'll be reading my Bible, for example. I'll be connected with God, and I feel myself growing spiritually. And when I'm the one to pray before we as a family go to bed, you know, I, can, I started to see that, okay, my prayers begin to resemble my mom, my dad, my brother, and everything like that. But then... When we return back to London, and then London brings its distractions again, and, you know, when there's everything around you, you know, you've got homework to do, you've got to go to school, you know, the electrical gadgets are always on 24-7 and everything, I return back to my old way of praying, you know, so it was a bit of a cycle over here. But at the same time, you know, those experiences, those really stayed with me. So when it came to the time when there was things that was particularly important to me that I wanted to pray about, I always took myself to a quiet place to connect to God. You know, when it's exams, when I bother to pray about exams, um, my university degree, you know, driving tests that I preached about, job hunting as I preached about, you know, it's like I'll go to a quiet place and really, you know, ex explain to God what is on my heart in that present moment. And, you know, it actually produced tangible results. And even, I think, the most important thing I gained from that experience is that there are no such thing as I pray that's not good enough for God because really it's like a child could pray and God will answer that child's prayer even though that child is not quoting every single scripture in the Bible, you know. Um, you know and all that mattered in that moment is the heart of the person who's praying. You know, it says in Psalms 145, 18 to 19 that the Lord is there unto all those who call upon him and to all who call upon him in truth. He'll fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and save them. All you need to do is offer up a prayer, sealed in the name of Jesus, and that is enough for you. Even so, prayer is also very vital to spiritual growth. Because, you know, when you eat food, whatever you consume is what is used to repair and replace the cells in your physical body. And if you're hungry, you know, your parents or, you know, family members eating are not going to fill your own stomach. Likewise, you can, apply, you can apply this to your spiritual life. The prayers of your parents are not going to make you grow spiritually. If you remember when Jesus was to be tempted by the devil, he said, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And how do you 
receive the word from God. And that is through prayer and spending time within God's presence. Again, you know, you look at Christ who started the prayer immediately after baptism. He went to the wilderness to fast and pray and to receive insight from God. Throughout his ministration, he frequently removed himself from his disciples, removed himself from all the people who wanted him to lay hands on them and went to either another, another wilderness or another mountaintop again to fast and pray and to hear from the Father. Towards the end, him and the disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, they went together. Jesus still separated himself again to pray unto God. And, you know, when you pray to God, you hear back from God. So, you know, then the times that you read, for example, John 14, 13, where it says, and whatever you shall ask in my name that I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So then you also think, so why is it that I have unanswered prayers? And really, that's like a something for another time. But really, um, it's like the, that doesn't necessarily mean that we should stop asking if God hasn't given us an answer there and then. Um, if you refer to the parable of the unjust judge in Luke 18, you know, just to paraphrase that there's a judge who didn't fear God, didn't fear his fellow man, he happened to live in a certain town with a certain widow who wanted this judge to provide justice against her adversary. And he said no, he kept on saying no. She kept on persisting and, you know, uh, annoying him, so to speak. So eventually he caved and he said that he does not want to be warned and he did grant her the justice. And the Bible also said that we should ask until our joy is full, that is, continue asking until God has given us what it is that we want from him. Most versions of the Bible in Matthew 7, 7 said, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it shall be opened to you. But the New Living Translation version said, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and the door will be opened to you. I mean, no, and you will find, right? Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. And again, with Daniel, prayed to the Lord didn't receive an answer, kept on praying. 21 days later, the angel said, no, the Lord actually sent your answer. Immediately you prayed to him, but it's because I was delayed. But your persistent prayer is what enabled the Lord to send through the archangel Michael to push through this message so it can be delivered unto you. And, you know, there's been some of us that have been waiting on the Lord for things more than 21 days, some of us for even for years. But, you know, this year, what do you say, the, the theme of, the years of this year is the year of impossibility. And the Lord said he will do things in our lives that have been deemed impossible. But we ourselves have a part to play. You know, we have to act and be. We, the Lord is not going to come down and say, oh, yeah, I know what you want. You have to say, God, this is what I want. Um, you know, even me, myself, I've been raised on the Lord for things for a while now. And it's only taken years for it to really um, settle in, you know, like the importance and the power of persistent prayer. And, you know, I plan to return back to this pulpit and say, this is what the Lord has done for me, you know. And I want that for all of you, each and every one of you. So always remember to pray, to connect with God, and to never give up in your prayers. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word in our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just rise up as we close the service? Share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week.